Um, so, okay, uh, guys, welcome to uh, JavaScript for uh, beginners. Now, as is the norm by now, all my sessions are linked from one session to another, right? For example, previously I did a 10 or 12 plus chapters about freelancing. So they all flow in a sequence. So similarly, uh, this time we are doing JavaScript for beginners. Now I've already explained what JavaScript is, why and all that in the previous session. So uh, those of you who missed it, please don't forget to watch the recording either on YouTube or on the student dashboard and so on. And in every video, because we are talking about programming, there are many tasks or homework that you will have to do. And because we only have you know 45 or 55 minutes to spend with you, I'll be showing you a lot of things, but you won't be able to follow along with me at all. So it's okay if you're not able to grasp everything uh, while I'm talking to you. So get as much knowledge as you can, and then go back to the recording, watch it again and again and again. So this is like a very high density session, all the sessions, you know, there is no way to simplify this. But luckily, as I said, everything is getting recorded. You pause stuff, rewind, watch it again, try to do the steps. So please remember that. So now at this point, you should already have some things ready. For example, in the previous session, I've told you the diff different things you have to install on your computer, stuff like GitHub tools, uh, Git bash tools, and so on and so forth. If you already did that, okay, that's great. You'll follow along just fine. If you're not able to do it, no problem. As I mentioned, take as much as you can in the live session and then go back and try the recordings and practice what I am doing. Now, one thing I want to again, mention is I'm going to go quickly to the end of the slide. And this is where I want to mention. So please understand that because this is programming, asking questions and finding information is an important part of your learning. So just to show you, so there is a, let me just get my marker here. Oh, so yeah, there we go. So I do have the YouTube channel, which has, you know, there are some steps where here I give like an introduction, but I've made long videos. Uh, and then I have a GitHub repository with example code. I also have a discussion forum for the students. I also have demo projects, which we'll be building at the very end of the series. So we are only just starting now, but the demo projects are already ready, available for those of you who want to take a head start or something. Uh, the last one, we know we'll talk about that later. And I also prepared a one sheet document for you. So let me go ahead and share that. Uh, Professor, let me just uh, share the document. So I made this document just for this class. So just give me one minute, sir. Let me just quickly get that for you. I think you'll be able to put it into chat as a file. Uh, th that's what I'll do here, Professor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I, because I realized that I'm sharing a lot of links but you may not be able to just take it from the video. So you may find it difficult. So I made this document. So let me just chat uh, to everyone. There we go. Uh, file. Okay. Uh, okay. There you go. Uh, one sheet document for AIU students. And I'll explain what this one sheet also has as well. Uh, uh, it's uploading right now. Okay. There we go. Uh, Professor, are you able to see it on your side as well? So if you can see it, the students can see it. Yes, I can see it. Everybody you Excellent, just have to Professor. click, now, click on that file in that. chat and it'll download to your computer. Go ahead, Jane. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, guys, this is the uh, document I've just shared with you. I'm going to quickly go through this document. This is part of the presentation and I would say this is the most important document I can share with you. So please watch this part of the video again and again to understand what I'm really talking about. Now, the first thing is I have something called as a front end for students GitHub repository. Now this one, I'm just opening that right now on the screen. Jay, are you able to make that document bigger on the screen? Oh, so I should that... make it uh, even more bigger. Sorry, professor. I didn't realize Yeah, that. like sorry. that. Perfect. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. Okay. Excellent. I keep forgetting, professor. I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting <laughs> to zoom in. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so first step is 
uh, the very first link is the best destination for you. This is something I've been maintaining for many, many years. It contains uh, projects, example projects for Bootstrap. Uh, let me zoom in here as well. There we go. So it has example projects in Bootstrap. It has example projects in React here. And it has something called as Postman Collection. So right now, all of this may seem very, very new to you, but there's nothing stopping you from simply going here downloading these files and just to experiment with it, okay? And this contains all the demo projects that we will be building at the end of this workshop after all the sessions are completed. So that is why this is important. And also whenever I uh, build any code or something, you will notice that I usually give a lot of links in every repository. So you don't have to wait for the video. You can simply go there and usually there'll be a lot of steps instructions, links, important information, notes, everything will already be there for you. So please remember to check this out. So if you are really like getting serious now, I believe you are serious. Otherwise, why would you come to this session? So you are putting that effort. So now is your chance to go ahead and spend a little bit more extra effort to get maximum, you know, like, you know, I always talk about whenever people talk to me, I tell them like, I'm, I'm like a, a guy who squeezes every ounce of gold from the gold mine, you know, that's how you should be, you know, whatever is in front of you, you, you know, if it's given to you, make sure you get the maximum out of this. So this is your first thing, front end for students. It has test, every code is tested. It's been revised, revised, revised. It's been used with hundreds of students all over the world by me in my own classes. So that is item number one. Second thing, now there is something called next JS for students. So this is another demo repository uh, this is also part of the workshop. So this has, just like the front end for students, it has a lot of example code for you to study. So that is item number uh, two. Now let's keep going here. The next thing is of course my own account. Uh, okay, I mean, obviously I've shown this many, many times. Uh, here, the first thing you wanna do here is when you go to my account, remember to follow me. Uh, again, I'm not trying to become like a YouTube personality or something. But if you follow me, whenever I add new code, whenever I update any discussions, or you just wanna find out the demo projects, you'll find out. So if you are planning to become developer, which I believe you are, please just come here and follow. And if you're applying for a job, remember your GitHub should look something like this. So whenever you're thinking, hey, how should my GitHub account look? Then you don't have to do any research. Just come to my account, see if you can make your account look like mine. That, that should be more than enough for you to get your first internship or first job. Now let's keep going with the one sheet document. The last one is, ah, yes. Okay, now this is what, this is the discussion forum that I keep talking about. Okay, you'll see here, many of my past students, they have opened new threads, they've asked doubts and I've answered them wherever I can. So this link, let me just go back and show it again, the link number four. So if you have any doubts, because I don't know when you'll be practicing, I don't know when you'll be watching this video. So which means your questions can come at any point of time. Okay, so whenever you have a doubt, go to the discussion forum and just ask as many questions as you want. And I always reply. I don't ignore anybody. You'll see here that I've gone ahead and reply to all of them. You can see my face in all of them because every time a student posts a question, I reply to them to the best of my ability. So this is like completely free. There's no fees or anything like that. So let's say you're working on, you're watching a video today, you have a doubt and you just come to the discussion forum, post your doubt. The more questions you ask, the more answers you get. And you can also answer questions from other students if you know something which before I answer, if you answer, again, it's like a community stuff. So that's the discussion forum. You know, every time I do a presentation, I'll keep telling you, right? Like support for student community. And I keep saying that I have a dis GitHub discussion forum. This is what I mean. So this is the discussion forum. It's an open forum. You know, there's no need to do anything. There's no subscription, whatever ads, nothing. It's just discussion. So coming back to the one sheet, I also put the entire syllabus that I'm following for this workshop. So the syllabus I'm using is called Free Code Camp. As the title says, you can see here, uh, hold on. 
for some reason it won't let me click that so i'll have to copy paste hold on please so this is the syllabus i'm following along for this workshop this entire series of workshops i'm using this online syllabus called free code camp it, uh, the site is a little bit slow because it's free i guess uh, so there you go guys this has all the some 200 to 300 chapters which covers everything in javascript now obviously i won't be covering all 400 chapters i'll be picking and choosing the best topics in every session uh, but again if you are going deep you know whatever i teach you you're able to learn easily and you want to go deeper the syllabus is already there and and the best part is this is an interactive syllabus which means you know you open a chapter they'll tell you what you have to do and then you can practice the code you can submit your answer it's 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 graded and the best part is if you manage to finish this it takes about 100 to 200 hours i'm not kidding 100 hours to 200 hours and if you can finish this at the end they actually give you a certificate which is really, really cool. Uh, let me show you my own certificate. Uh, Professor, let me just log in on my account, sir. One second, sir. That's fine. And can as Dr. Have... Walson was saying in the can, last can, session- can, can, you, oh, can you give just a, a brief answer to why is JavaScript important? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Of course. So uh, Professor Lambert, like what has happened is there has been a, a fundamental shift in the software industry since 2010. Now, why 2010? 2010 is the time around the time when the iPhone was announced. Now that is a big milestone professor because for the first time in the history of computers, there was now a computer which can fit in your pocket. The smartphone. Before that, there have been small phones, Professor. There were, there were a lot of branded phones and stuff like that, but they were mostly for, you know, stock traders or, or you know, very techy, geeky type people and stuff like that. The iPhone was the first mobile computer which allowed people to use a computer wherever they are. And that had an impact on the world of programming professor. Like what happened was before the announcement of the iPhone, the software was primarily built in languages such as uh, C Sharp, which is my personal favorite, or C++, Java, and so on. But there were no programming languages which were designed for the mobile small computer, which is your smartphone. At that time, all these companies, professor, like Google, Facebook, they're also like, you know, they realize there's an opportunity here to make money through smartphones, you know, with their apps and everything. So they started investing millions of dollars into making JavaScript better. They saw the potential of JavaScript. So you, you imagine that, professor, like till then, all the research about programming languages was focused on building software for a computer. But now you have these big companies like Facebook and Google and all these other startups and everything who saw an opportunity in the mobile app market. And then they realized they don't have a language for that. So they picked JavaScript, which was a very minority language till then. And they started adding features, they started adding features. And very soon, within a few years, JavaScript became the de facto language for both front-end development and back-end development. So it's one of the few languages which allows you to do both, professor. Like for example, C sharp. You can only do backend. Yeah, I remember like maybe five, seven years ago, there was a problem with JavaScript being updated properly. Do you remember that time? Yes, sir. Around 2015, the, the JavaScript, uh, they have like a board, like association or something. They finally standardized JavaScript and ironed out all the problems. So all the JavaScript we use today, uh, you know, uh, it, it, the standardized one go back to 2015 and around that time, Professor. But yes, as you said, sir, nobody owns JavaScript. So everybody else, everybody was, you know, making their own improvements without any oversight. And, and, and so, eventually so enough people complained and things so got now, standardized. So now JavaScript is the language of the internet, basically? 
Uh, two of them, Professor, uh, Python and JavaScript. So ideally, you should know both of these today, especially if you're a younger developer, like old guys like me, we are okay. Uh, we can make do with C-sharp and stuff like that because we already have the experience to back us up and there's enough work in C-sharp to take care of us. But the new kids, the younger ones, the new students, uh, they must begin the journey in JavaScript and uh, you know, once they are comfortable with JavaScript, start learning Python as well, because Python is a language for AI and data science. So a uh, lot of jobs are like becoming AI oriented. So you can't escape Python at this point of time. So as I mentioned in the before the session, Professor, even I am now forced uh, to learn Python, although I, I, would, I, would, I would prefer to work on JavaScript or prefer to work on C Sharp, but the industry is changing so fast because of this AI thing, I have no choice but to embrace and learn one more language. Uh, you know, I was, I was like, okay, you know, I'm done. I can settle down. But there's no settling down here, Professor. So with, with JavaScript, you can use that to build web pages, algorithms. What, what, what are the, some of the things you can do with JavaScript? Professor, JavaScript, uh, one, uh, you can build backend services. You know, like when we talked about anything like right now, when you watch a movie on Netflix or something, the movie has to come from somewhere. When you log into a website, your user information has to be stored somewhere. So well, when you log into Zoom, Zoom has to verify that, yes, this link works, this person is logged in, that person is not logged in. So those things are all backend services. Uh, also, the people also use the word web APIs. So that is that is that that can be done with JavaScript. Front-end professor, JavaScript dominates. Like, React JS, Next JS, websites, web apps, mobile apps for Android, mobile apps for iOS, desktop apps for Windows, desktop apps for Mac, Linux, everything is built with JavaScript. Would you expect the students to do back end or front end? Uh, that's a, that, that comes down to a personal choice, uh, Professor Lambert. Like in this workshop, I will be touching upon both because uh, the framework I've chosen as the end of this workshop, Next.js, that's what I'm using uh, for the end of this workshop, like at the very end, uh, is a combination of both backend and frontend. So uh, the students have to choose professor because uh, frontend, backend, they are kind of like together, but they still exist separately. So it is possible for a developer to become very good at frontend or become really good at backend, and some of them they try to do both. So I would I would suggest people to take a you know take a sample of what we are doing here, and then make up their own mind about what suits their style. For example, I am primarily a backend developer, that suits me well. Uh, front end, I would know nothing beyond the basics, like I, because if we, we all need to have the basic knowledge, professor. So I, I should know enough front end so I can talk to the front end developer. And the front end developer should know enough back end so he can talk to me. So we can't live in isolation. It doesn't work that way. So that choice, Professor, is usually made by the developer. But sometimes, Professor, it's not a choice. Like, let's say you're applying for a job and you get an internship in back end, and you are not always in a position to say no. So you don't have a choice but to just adjust to the back end lifestyle. Whereas another developer might be getting up for a a back-end career, but he gets a front-end internship. So these decisions are usually made by, uh, you know, market forces. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, give it an example. If if you're if you're a student and you're looking for some work to develop your JavaScript, and there's a business, what what might that business ask you to do for them? Uh, professor, initially, uh, a beginner developer that ideally ask you. It, one, if you know JavaScript, they usually ask you to pass some tests and stuff like that, uh, coding tests and so on with JavaScript. There is a website, Professor, let me just show you right now. It's called Lead Code. Uh, sometimes when I'm bored, I go there, Professor. Uh, let me just show that as well. Uh, because you I'm already bored, bored I don't believe it. I don't believe you ever get bored. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so this is the professor, the website, Lead Code, uh, very useful for freshers because usually, especially today, when you apply for an internship or a first job, they usually ask you uh, for your Lead Code profile, like how many puzzles of coding have you solved in JavaScript, for example. So, it, it, you know, this is this it kind of keeps track of 
what you're capable of as a developer. So this is like a coding, puzzle solving, entrance test, job interview preparation site. So that's the first thing, Professor. The second thing is, uh, especially for a fresher, for an internship, for a first job, they'll ask you, okay, have you built a, a, a website? Uh, you know, have you built anything at all? You, even a simple website like a blog or something complex, you know, where you can log in, like how you log into a website or have you, do you have like a demo e-commerce shop, something like Amazon or something. So these things are all very straightforward, Professor. We have a lot of templates that we can use to build these things, you know, with, with a reasonable knowledge to JavaScript, you can have your own e-commerce site running in a, in a matter of hours or even days. So that would be the first step they ask you, sir. Okay, Jay, what, what is the web, web page there? I'm gonna write it into chat. Uh, Professor, let me put it on the chat, sir. Uh, let me save okay. the trouble. <laughs> uh, it's a lead code, Professor. Lead code. So this is like a competition website, sir, uh, where you come to sharpen your coding skills. And also, every time you do something, so now I don't have a great profile, Professor, because I mostly use this uh, to my students. Uh, so let me just show you here. So there you go. So that's my account. I'll just let everybody know, you know, if you see leetcode.com, you can actually go to google.com or YouTube and, and Google and, and, and do a search for leet code review or leet code tutorial or something like that. Right. There's like, oh, there's so many ways to learn about everything nowadays. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is true. That is true. So this is what I'm talking about, professor. Like if somebody is younger or something, uh, you know, like right now you can see that I have solved 28 puzzles. So ideally a fresher or an intern should have solved at least a hundred problems just to prove that they know what they are doing. And usually when you start doing things, you get like a rank or something. Now I don't have a good rank professor, but a student is expected to have a good rank, maybe something like 40,000 or 50,000. And of course, if they are in the top one or 2%, uh, you know, they don't even need to go for an interview. <laughs> the website just tells people uh, how smart you are and you just get a job automatically. So, uh, and the best part professor is you can tell, you know, it, you get feedback like right now, my rank is 2 million. So let's say I'm like 21 year old or something. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply for a job in six months. Then I can literally work every day and push my rank up, like how you would work out to build muscle. So you literally push your own brain muscles and the website will track your progress. So by, by the time you're done after six months, if you put your effort and you are like, I don't know, 50,000 rank, that is a good number because this is a global rank. So if you're in the top 50,000 developer in the world, as per the website, you don't even need a resume professor. Jay, that is excellent information to share with the students. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And along with the professor, they usually have to, you know, show like a, a demo project or a demo website. Uh, so that way they know, you know, a combination of lead code uh, plus a good GitHub, uh, you know, a good, good GitHub profile with some uh, repositories and stuff like that. And then obviously one or two uh, demo projects, you have these three things. You know, your interview is like over in a few minutes because the proof is in the pudding. They can tell you know what you're doing. But the opposite is also true, Professor. Since you're asking me, you don't have GitHub, you don't have demo projects, you don't have lead code means you obviously did not put any effort into your career. So, so you won't even get a call for interview. Like I've seen a lot of students, they complain like, okay, they graduated. They did this stuff, they attended workshops, but they are not getting interview calls. You know, they are applying for jobs, they're applying for resume, nobody sees the resume or they don't get call backs because the resume must carry a weight professor. You know, if you, if you have a bar of silver and you have a bar of gold, obviously you want gold. You know, your resume is like metal. You know, the more you put stuff in your profile, GitHub, lead code, demo projects, that adds density to your resume. So when there is density, the, the, the recruiters, they can feel the weight. So they'll call you, uh, they'll come to your house <laughs> and like, hey, come on work. <laughs> but when you don't put things, you know, you just walk in with a, with a graduate degree or something, it's like paperweight, who cares about that? So the three things you need are GitHub. Lead code. 
Leet code. I'm putting this into chat. And yes, sir. A uh, lead code uh, and uh, yeah. GitHub. Prof uh, let me put that on the PowerPoint as well, Professor. While you're putting in chat, uh, so I mean, uh, I think that's a good a thing. Demo so project. Put it here. Right. So yes, sir. So three things. Uh, the first thing is uh, let me just reverse the order, Professor. First thing is your GitHub profile. You know, with some repositories and stuff like that. Repository or things that you've done in the past. Uh, yes, Professor. Like, for example, on my account, you can see here that I have three main repositories. Uh, so people, you know, they can just come here. And, let, for example, if I go, if I click on this, you'll see here that I've been working on this for so many years. So much of code has been added and removed and updated. So this shows to people, like, if I was applying for a job, but like, hey, Jay, look at this, look at this guy. He's been working on this for more than three years. So this guy must be very committed. So your GitHub account is proof of what you have done as a developer, Professor. So we that's the question, first thing, Professor. We have a question in chat from Lorraine. I've tried to use GitHub, but most of the projects have errors, but I'm not very good with coding. Are you able to help when I am stuck? So that is the, uh, the answer is very straightforward, Professor. Uh, so item number one, you want to use only those repositories which, you know, you shared, you know, which you shared with you from a reliable tutor. For example, my repository does not have errors because I keep checking it for errors almost every month and students tell me errors, I fix them immediately. So that's the main thing, Professor. Like, you know, it's like, for example, you go, you watch movies out of 100 movies, only five of them may be good. 10 of them may be okay, but the remaining 85 are terrible. It doesn't mean movies are bad. So similarly, you must know which repository to spend time with. Like I can tell, I can vouch for my code and tell you that, hey, my code is error free. And if you get any doubts, if you get any errors, I already showed you. That's why I started the session with the support community. That the discussion forum is open. You post a question. I'll usually reply within 24 to 48 hours. So it's a very, so that's what you have to do, Professor. Like when you use anybody's repository, whatever you find on the internet, the easiest thing to do is okay. See when was it last updated? Like for example, I updated but this three weeks can't, ago. Can't you go in there and do like an F11 or an F12, and it'll show you what the error is? It will, Professor, but this is uh, this is something you'll also see in a few sessions, Professor, when you start working on code is, Professor, these days, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but the reality is modern JavaScript frameworks or any framework is crazy complex. So suppose you are a new learner and you try to run the project and it doesn't run right off the bat, I would ideally recommend don't waste your time. Because even an experienced developer will take a while to investigate the error, fix the error, and make it run. So, so, so I would ideally not recommend uh, students to worry about fixing an error, professor. Debugging, that's what we call it. I don't recommend it for first-time learners. Professor. It's easier to use code and projects which are, which, which are error-free just to make your life easy. And when you have enough experience and you're like feeling confident, like, okay, you know, I can do this if something goes wrong, then it's it's good to explore, uh, you know, other repositories, Professor. That That is my response uh, to that. And the easiest way to check, Professor, is every repository will, will mention how long ago it was updated. So usually if a repository is like, was updated like six months ago or something, best not to use it. Uh, because it may have error, the person who maintains that repository may have left the project, abandoned it, uh, and so on and so forth. So that is my one small tip about what repositories to trust. Just one question: Is how do you know there are how do you know there are errors? Uh, because you try to run something uh, like uh, uh, let me. Uh, I, I, I don't have anything today here, Professor, but uh, you know, if you try to run a project, 
normally you wouldn't get. Let me see if I can just show you, Professor. Hold on, Professor. I, I didn't have anything for today, but let me just open one of the one seconds. Uh, let me just give you an idea. Yes, sir. I'm just getting one of my projects running on my computer, sir. Uh, it's still loading, Professor. Just give me one minute, sir. Uh, I have another one, Professor. This one is taking a while. Let me get one more. Let me have two of that ready. Uh, guys, I'm just loading it. Uh, these projects, they all take a while to load. Uh, please hold on. Okay, all right. Uh, Professor, are you able to uh, see my screen now? Something called Versal Dashboard App. Yes. Okay, now they, here, there are two things here, Professor. Now I'm gonna take my marker and I'll point out what you should be on the lookout for. Now, one thing is, as I mentioned, when it was updated. And the second thing is, you'll notice that I have a link right here to the right side, uh, which shows that you can click on it, for instance. So now what happens here is normally, now I have gone ahead and opened that project here. And so this is the actual live project. Let me erase the drawings there. This is the live project and this is the code. So usually when you have your live project and you have your code both running fine, that usually means it's a project that will not give any errors. However, if you see a project where one, it's not updated, and second, there is no option to open it and look at it live, uh, then there's a chance that it might have an error. But unfortunately, Professor, I don't have anything right now which has an error project because these things have been revised so many times, I managed to remove all the errors. However, when I'm building a project here for in, a, in an upcoming the future sessions, I should be able to show you how errors happen and how we can fix it. I don't know if I've answered your question specifically, Professor, uh, because I don't have anything ready to show today. That's good. <clears throat> We're getting a very good idea of what JavaScript is and, and how to build your profile and your career with it. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like, I'll, like uh, just to give you an idea, Professor, let me go ahead and log into this website. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. Ah. So now look at this professor. Now this is the demo project I plan to build at the very end of this workshop. So here what you have is what we call a very standard backend, frontend, dashboard app. So very important professor. It's, it's, it's a, let me just get my marker again. So it's a very simple, so dashboard. So that's what we call it. So it's a, it's a very straightforward a dashboard app. It's a very standard requirement anytime you apply for a job. So dashboard project or a dashboard app. So what, as you as you can imagine, Professor, a dashboard, like you might, I'm sure you have like student dashboards at AIU to keep an eye on how the students are performing, like how many people came to Zoom sessions, how many do it, I mean, uh, folks are logged in, logged out, how many are passing, how many are not passing. So the idea of a dashboard is to give you a lot of information in a single place, connect to a database, log in, log out, and it'll have some features like, for example, imagine right now I have a list of customers here. You could have a list of students. 
So this is what is called a dashboard project, uh, Professor. So ideally, any person who applies for a job, either as an internship or a first-time developer, should at least know how to build and deploy. Deploy means you should be able to access it on your computer or something. So you should be able to build or deploy the project. So if you can do this much, at least, that means you have some uh, developer skills. So this is like a demo project. So these are the three things we are talking about, Professor. GitHub profile, lead code uh, with the rank. Very important, if you just have a lead code account without a rank, again, it loses value. Uh, and the last thing is, is a demo project, you know, something like a, a dashboard app, or at least a simple, uh, you know, landing page site or something. A landing page site, Professor, is like, it just says hello, it doesn't do anything. Like for example, sir, I have my you know personal website, it doesn't do anything, uh, but it's just a landing page. Uh, it just shows, tells you who I am and what I do. It doesn't have any login, log out, data or anything like that. So this is called a landing page site. I mean, at the bare minimum, you should be able to build something like this. But so basically ideally, a landing page gives links you, to your other work. That's it. That's it. That's a landing page. There you go, Professor. Yes, sir. It's like it's like a, a university website which, which which talks about courses or something. You can't log in or anything, but you can get the information about courses, programs offered, uh, maybe campus profile, uh, faculty profile. Those are called landing static pages. So at a bare minimum, you should be able to build this. But ideally, you should actually be building a dashboard which has database, login, complex framework. So if you can build this and you can explain the code, that's very important because anybody can build this. You know, This is not like a homework where you can prove with your signature that you wrote the homework. So ideally you should be able to show the project like how I'm showing to you right now. Plus you should be able to explain the code as well. That is how they know that you built it. Uh, and then usually in a job interview professor, they'll ask you to make some changes because then I'm sure you imagine professor, a lot of students like to cheat because it's easier to cheat than work hard. So, so ideally they'll ask you to uh, bring your laptop and then you have to make some small, small changes. You know, nothing exhaustive, you know, they'll just ask you like, hey, you know what, uh, can you add another customer? You know, where is the code coming from? Or, you know, stuff like that, professor. So nothing, nothing fancy. Actually, I think a lot of students want to put in the effort. They want to do quality work. And that, that's yes, the you do. And so if you see a student that's kind of cheating, they, it kind of shows, right? That's true, Professor. Like oh, the reason why I'm mentioning this is uh, some, some, some students, they get married to the fact that, okay, the professor said it's enough if, if they show stuff. Uh, so I always like to add, like, it's not enough if you just show things. It's also required that you actually explain the code and be ready to make small modifications on the job interview. Uh, and in fact, even if the person doesn't ask you, you should take the initiative and make some changes anyway. You know, like, for example, in an interview professor, it's better if you show things, like you can tell people that you're great or you can show them why you're great. The second option is better. Yeah, I think with JavaScript, it's just going to be hard, hard work, concentration until you begin to learn the skills. Uh, that's right, Professor. And, and I have an ideal experience-based number on that, Professor. You should be putting aside, you should be budgeting at least 10 to 20 hours per week. Anything less than that, you won't become a developer at least for a year or so. There is no escaping the hard work. It's like going to the gym. You have to go every day. You have to wait for a few months, maybe a year or so, before you you know your body starts showing the results. Same thing with coding, professor. Uh, professor, you're muted, professor. All right, let's get back on track. Do you want to go back to that original document you put up? Oh, yes, Professor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right then. So the main thing what I was talking about is the certificate, the free code camp certificate. It looks something like this, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So let me go ahead and uh, where are you? Oh, there we go. So 
if you do all this, like I have done here, you know, all the 300, 200 chapters, you can see it, it's all done many, many years ago. And then if I go here, they actually give a nice presentable uh, certificate. And I know from experience and from other students that this certificate actually carries some value. Even if you didn't do all the puzzles by yourself, even if you didn't do all the coding challenges by yourself, just the fact that you sat down and went through some 200 hours of JavaScript shows that you are ready to become a developer. So this is the syllabus we are following in the workshop. So I'll be picking and choosing the key components you know, during these workshops. At the same time, I would highly recommend that you guys, once you create your GitHub account, which we discussed in the last session, log into this website and start knocking off the chapters. You know, every day you sit for two hours, one hour, you can finish five, five chapters. So in six months or so, all 200, 300 chapters will be over. And, and this certificate, in my own experience, I've seen a lot of people take the certificate and use it in their job certification. Even though it's free and online, it still carries a lot of weight, Professor. So this is the link I've shared there in the document. So returning to this one, sir, next thing is there's another online resource. It's a Mozilla website. It's called JavaScript by Mozilla. Mozilla is the company that makes the Firefox browser. So this is like a, you know how people say, Jay, do you have a textbook for your workshop? You know, where should I go if I have an in-depth question? Do you have a textbook? This is a textbook. So everything under the sun with respect to JavaScript is here, mainly because Mozilla is one of those guys who is involved in the development of JavaScript. So they know their stuff and they make browsers which runs, which use JavaScript. So again, they are the experts. So all the websites in the world doesn't matter. For me, this is where I come when I have a doubt. So that is why this link is also there in the one sheet document, professor. So these are the developer resources. The first one, first stop is JavaScript certification from Free Code Camp. Second one is whenever you have a question, you want a textbook, you want a reference book, the one, the big book with all the details, that is the one from Mozilla. And then the developer tools, you know, uh, so I'll be showing the how to use the tools and everything. Um, you know, I was supposed to do it today, but we, we had uh, things to discuss. So. Uh, we'll be coming to the tools in the next session. So we'll be using what is called as Visual Studio. Um, you'll have to install this, have it ready. I'll show you how to use it in the next workshop. I put the link there. And of course, recommended browser for the workshop. Again, the link is there, Firefox. I'll be using Firefox. You can use Chrome, Edge, Opera, whatever you want. But I myself use Firefox in my classes. There is no reason for it. It's like why I like red color or blue color, no, just a preference. So I use Firefox every day, so I got used to it. So that's what I'm going to use in the class. Next, as I mentioned, just to get everything ready, just to get everything set up. It's very, very confusing. It's very, very complex. Just to get your computer ready. You know, I've seen students, like when I do private tutoring, sometimes I have spent five hours, 10 hours with the client. It's a lot of money, but still, uh, I spent five hours, 10 hours with the client just to install all the tools. It's a very lengthy process, especially if you're new to computers. So I made these videos where I have shown steps like even how to click a mouse, even how to open a folder. I, I got into extreme details in my YouTube channel. So I put all the videos in a playlist so that these are all the playlists from my own YouTube channel, which has videos on how to use GitHub, how to do demo projects, and of course, you know, how to stay in touch with me and stuff like that. So there you go, guys. So you have all the videos, the very basics, you know, like Jay, I don't even know how to open computers. I don't even know how to install software. No problem. I've made long, long videos. I know one video, it's like 90 minutes. Very, very detailed videos. So those are the links. And finally, as I keep saying in every workshop, Anything you want to learn, I'm sure Professor Lambert will agree with me, it is a matter of discipline, time, and perseverance. It, it, not just about coding. Anything else in life, 
relationships, working hard, job, success. It comes down to discipline, budgeting time, and perseverance. Uh, yeah, so I, that's I, what the... I, I would say that for the brain to really learn something, you have to study it every single day, at least yes, sir. five, 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Because yes, then sir. the brain yes, during the night when you're sleeping, it's assimilating the information and it really yes, builds sir. fast. So yes, if, you, yes, if you let a couple of days go by, it like loses that momentum inside your brain. The, 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 exactly, sir. Exactly. Uh, and also, guys, one, one more thing. This is something which uh, some students don't seem to get is that you have to understand that you have to look far. Okay. You could be spending days learning program, but it will take you many, many months before you can actually build something that you can show. So again, you will have to be very, very patient. And I've seen many developers, they start like, you know, when it's new, they get very excited. Uh, but then after a month or so, because they're not seeing results, they lose momentum, they lose motivation, and then they simply give up. And then six months later, they find their friend building web apps, they find their friend building APIs, having GitHub, having lead code, and then they'll ask themselves, why are they not like their friend? And I have seen this happen so many times, Professor, both personally and also with students. I'm so sorry, guys. Programming is just like a relationship. It could be any relationship with your parents, with your spouse, with your, with your best friend, you know, relationships take effort, they take time. So same thing with JavaScript programming, treat it like you would treat your best friend or a family member and the relationship will pay off. Like, you know, I started coding when I was 15 years old. I spent day and night, uh, and this is a story I tell every time. So from age 15 to age 17, I was like coding like a monster. And what I did when I was younger, is still paying my bills today. Oh, this, I mean, of course, I worked hard after I was 17, but the foundation was put in between age 15 and it's, and I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I did that because now, uh, God's blessings, I have a reasonably good life uh, compared to how I was when I was born. So, as I mentioned all the time, I come from a very poor family. Like, the only place where we could see a MacBook was in a magazine and we couldn't even buy the magazine. <laughs> we had to steal the paper from the library because we couldn't afford the magazine. Uh, today, I have so many Macs. I keep gifting people MacBooks, uh, my family members, not, the road, not outsiders or something. So, you know, I, I would call that progress. I would call that coming out of a life of poverty and having a better life. So same thing with you guys. The effort is so, don't look at tomorrow. Don't look at next week. Don't look at next month. Look at things from six months, like, hey, you know what? In six months, I will have that free code camp certificate. In 12 months, I will build that dashboard that Jay was talking about. And, and how do you do this? You know, what I do is I have what is called as, uh, Professor, you may have also heard of this word. I call them mnemonics, Professor. Uh, have you heard of, I'm sure you heard of it. So mnemonics are mental devices you keep in your house to remind you that you have to do something. Okay, for example, just one second, guys. I know this is funny, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, I am trying to become an economist. Professor, I bought this book by Adam Smith, The Wealth of Nations. I didn't even open it, Professor. Like, I already have another copy. Every day when I get up, it's right in front of my desk, day and night, because I'm trying to become an economist. So I get up, I go to sleep, I go to the restroom, I go to shower, I sit down, I wake up, I'm tired, I'm happy. I look at this every moment of my time. And this reminds me what I want to be. And I keep telling myself, okay, it'll take you five years to become an economist. We will wait, but I won't forget. Every day I study, 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 study. I get bored, I feel lazy. I look at this book and I'm like, what will Adam Smith think about you? He'll be ashamed of you. Get back to work. Get back to study. <laughs> I mean, that's my mnemonic device, Professor. So your mnemonic device could be anything. I know some people, Professor, like whenever they are not able to study, they think of their child or a spouse or a parent. And they tell themselves, hey, you know what? If I want to give them a good life next year, today I'm going to sit on my chair and practice. So it can be anything, Professor, whatever gets you going. 
I, I'm sorry, because I think I went philosophical there. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so coming back, guys, that is the one sheet document. Uh, I put everything from technology to developer tools, videos, certificates, reference material, and even some philosophical advice all in one sheet. I think that's why it's called a one sheet, Professor. Uh, professor, if you want, I can take some questions or uh, I, I didn't cover the topics I want to cover today. I, I, I believe I'll do that in the next sessions. I think it might be a good time if, if you ask the question and have the students answer the question in chat. Would that work, Professor? I never tried that. Yeah, let's let's start with the question. Okay, what are the three things to build your to build your career in this? What are the three basic things that you need? And just write your answers into chat. You see a few of them on the, the screen now. I don't see any answers there, Professor. No. Or at least give one of the three things that you need to build your career. There we go. Isaac's okay, coming. yes. We... <laughs> <laughs> okay, Isaac's got two of them. Et cetera, it doesn't count. <laughs> oh, okay, there we, we got go. a full answer there, Professor. <laughs> Okay, so now comes the question, what is a demo project? Write your answers into chat. Okay, we'll see, we'll see. Because I think some of, some people might think a demo project? What, what do you mean a demo project? I even put the demo project on the screen, Professor. Maybe that will inspire them to write the answer. Yes. Do you see any answers that are that are correct? Uh, they, uh, it is kind of related, um, uh, but I'll take it, Professor. But I'd like to improve on the answer. So the demo project is like the third component of your job preparation. Uh, it is primarily used to tell your interviewer that you know what you're talking about, and you know, to show them what you have built, and even make minor changes on the spot to convince them to get the job. So, so the demo part is like the final climax of your job interview, Professor. So your GitHub is your foundation, your lead code shows how good or bad you are as a developer. And finally, the demo project convinces the person trying to hire you that yes, you can build something. You know, it could be as simple as a landing page, or a full-fledged demo project like the one on the screen right now with login, database, and all that stuff. So you do this, Professor, at least you're good uh, for an internship or an entry-level job. I don't think it will help, help you get like a big job or something, but this is like a starting point. Okay, I'm getting a lot of stuff here, Professor. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay, I'll take that, okay. Uh, there you go, Professor. Uh, the answer from Mirabel is similar to what I was thinking, Professor. It's, it just it shows people, it illustrates that you're capable of doing something. So you don't have to actually build something very useful, but this give, it, it gives them proof uh, that you know what you're talking about, Professor. There you go. So that's good, Professor. Yes, yes, yes. And what, what, uh, what Professor, what, there is a... Go ahead, go ahead, Jay. Uh, sorry, Professor, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say, what what web page do you go to to show your demo project? Uh, are you asking me or for the students, Professor? I think I'll ask you. <laughs> oh, oh, Professor, the uh, I I uh, all of my demo projects are on GitHub, so that's where I live. You know, like everything I build, uh, small or big, I usually go ahead and just put it on GitHub. Uh, right now, because I work as a tutor, Professor, I put everything here. I only have one two and three. These are the three things I'm focusing on this year, Professor. I have C Sharp, which is my main bread and butter. I have front end, that's JavaScript. And finally, I have Next.js, which is the uh, one new thing I'm trying to learn this year. 
uh, I think next month or so, I'll put up the Python thing that I was talking about, Professor. So whatever I am working on, the kind of jobs I want to get into, I put that on the front page of my GitHub. So people know, like if you are a student, like they want to know what I'm up to, they can come here and they're like, okay, the guy was talking about front end JavaScript. Let's see what he has. Oh, they go here. They see all this and they're like, okay, there are a couple of projects. All right, that's what he teaches. That's what he has. Okay, so here's an, a quick question. When you when you have to uh, solve those puzzles to to increase your ranking, what web page is that? See if anybody wants to write that down in the chat before Jay answers. Uh, Professor, one of them has already given it, but we can wait for one more person to mention it again. They have okay. mentioned it already. All right. What's the web page where you solve puzzles to show that you can do JavaScript and and increase your ranking on an international ranking so that you can use that high ranking or that low ranking. You want to get your ranking lower and lower, correct? That's right, Professor. A higher rank means a lower number. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I, I don't see it, so go ahead and give the answer. Ah, there you wait, go, wait, Professor. Wait, we have it. Uh, Jeanette has it. Yes, sir. <laughs> so Lead Code is the website you would go to uh, to practice your skills. And as you practice, you solve puzzles and that gets recorded. And also they have these weekly contests, Professor. The weekly contests are ranked. So that is like a real test of your skills. So if you are an up and coming developer, the best way to, like for example, one thing you have to do, Professor, is like because the contest happens every week, by in itself, uh, participating in the contest can become an obsession or a motivational factor. So every week you prepare for the contest and every week you will lose because the context is really, really hard. And after a month or two, you solve your first contest and you're like, yes, you're making progress. And immediately you get a rank the next day. You're happy. And then you're like, okay, I got like, there are three puzzles in the contest. You got the basic one. Okay, I need to work hard to solve the next one. And then you keep working hard, you keep competing. And then the second one gets solved after a few months. And as you do this, whether you like it or not, you're practicing, you're practicing, you're going to the website, you're talking to other developers because even that website has discussion forums and so on. And before you know it, you are a developer. Before you know it, you're, you're downloading frameworks, you're installing frameworks. And uh, obviously, again, uh, that's what I'm, I'm telling professor like, what I like about software, even though I'm getting ready to leave software industry because of my Adam Smith obsession, what I want to tell the professor is there is, I, I mean, there is no other industry professor which welcomes uh, everybody, you know, like a software industry because the entry, you know, they, they call it the entry barrier. You know, as long as you have a laptop, even an old one, you can become a developer. The only thing stopping you from becoming a developer is yourself. In every other industry, you have to learn so much. You have to get a degree. You have to get certificates. You have to get this. You have to get that. You have to invest in so many things. You have to travel and all that. But software is the only job which literally, you know, in these days, computers, even a used computer is so powerful uh, compared to a computer from 10 years ago. Uh, of course, this also means there's a lot of competition. Uh, but but any person shouldn't be afraid of competition because it's just the way of life. Okay, so here's another question. What is the web page where you can go and read all those chapters so that you can learn JavaScript? Where all those chapters of lessons, what's that web page? <laughs> and, and gives a certificate at the end if you complete it. Do you have to complete all of the chapters to get the certificate? Yes, sir. All 200 to 300 chapters. Yes, sir. And so once you get that, you're basically certified as a JavaScript professional, really. That's it. That's it. Yeah, what is that web page? Because that's where you really want to go to start, right? To say, what is JavaScript? Give me a couple of lessons here. Let me let me see what's going on, right? Isn't that the first place <laughs> you would go? Uh, Professor, while we wait for that, I'm going to answer this question because okay. uh, this question has come up like a second or a third time. Uh, so um, I, I believe it's it's Haba. So uh, uh, Haba, so we don't have those thousands of JavaScript objects problem in JavaScript. I believe that's a problem in Java. Uh, Java is a completely separate thing, and JavaScript is a completely separate thing. 
So they are not related at all. It's like Apple the fruit and Apple the computer. So, so you, won't, you wouldn't have to worry about having to go through uh, you know, a, a voluminous book. That's what you said. That's not true. I don't know where that is coming from. Uh, that is not the case at all. For example, yes, the, the, the whole 300 chapters I told you, yes, you need to know that. But if you're a smart guy, you can actually become a developer by only knowing about 30% of the top important things. Uh, I call it the 80-20 rule. So you can get 80% of your work done with 20% of skill. So JavaScript is one of those things. So you really don't have to study any big books and hundreds of thousands of object knowledge. Not at all, not at all. I don't know where that is coming from. It could be Java, it could be some other programming language, but JavaScript doesn't have that problem, sir. So it's actually very easy to get in uh, you know, as I said, six months, I, I, I like to use that number, six months, 10 to 20 hours per week, the JavaScript certificate program with free code coming, and then you are ready to go. And I'm saying this from experience of teaching so many students all over the world. Uh, so it's not Java. So Java and JavaScript, totally separate. They are not related at all. Okay, so I don't see the answer yet for the web page that you need to go to to find those uh, chapters. That's FreeCodeCamp, Professor. I even mentioned the answer. I was hoping someone would catch that clue, FreeCodeCamp. There, yeah, oh yeah, so we have one, that answer came in from Herbert about two minutes ago, yes. FreeCodeCamp, yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer is there, Professor. It came at 8.32, uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, in India time, 8.32 p.m., yeah. So let me go into... That, that's right, Haba. That's right. Uh, Java and JavaScript are totally separate. I understand the confusion. So uh, I don't actually, blame you. I'm going to actually put the... Oh, wait. That's not going to work. I need to do the H. Uh, Professor, I'll put the link for you, so no problem. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I want that. I want that link so that the students can just click on it and say, okay, take me to lesson one. Get me started. I'm doing that right now, Professor. Okay, there you go, Professor. I put the link there. Excellent. So if you click on that, it should come. Uh, in fact, Professor, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and edit my one sheet document and send it again next week. I didn't realize uh, this link wouldn't work. Uh, I, I don't know if it works on your computer, but it's definitely not working for me. This oh, one yeah, is working. It doesn't have the HTTPS this... on it. Yes, Professor. I'll, I'll edit it, Professor. This is what I'm talking about. This is an error, Professor, but I'm open to suggestions. So I'm going to fix this <laughs> error and I will get a new document uh, before the next workshop. Yes, sir. Yeah, everybody do lesson one or even, yeah, at least lesson one. And it, it does. It, so you go through the lesson and then it gives you some problems to solve. Is that how it works? Uh, that's right, Professor. So today I was going to show all these tools one by one. I was going to show how GitHub works. I was going to show how VS Code works. I was going to show how Free Code Camp works. So I was going to go through it one by one, Professor. So I'll, I'll be doing that in an upcoming session. So, so, but yes, Professor, the idea is every chapter will give you instructions on what you're supposed to do. And then if you actually do it, the website will tell you, hey, you know what? You got it right. Let's go to the next chapter. So it's like a self evaluation, self graded, self paced programming code. So I would like students to think of it as a complement to what we are trying to do here. So here you get to hear me speak to you, tell you what are the main topics. So I'll be showing you like, for example, if I'm talking about say variables, I will actually do the variable chapter directly on the free code camp website, but I will be skipping so many chapters because we have very limited time. I mean, I would like it professor if AIU just hires me and just takes classes every day for eight hours. Now that'd be great, but we don't have that. So right. I have to focus. I have like a few hours every month. So what I do is every week before the session, I sit down, make a note, which is the most important topic the student should learn. So I'm gonna cover like about 10% of all the topics and hopefully the students are motivated enough to do the remaining 90% on their own. So I can't give you the full meal, but I can give you a sample. And you start doing one lesson each day. And it's like putting bricks, building a house. Yes, Professor, yes. 
So, every so I'm like going to show break. you how to lay some of the bricks. So I'm going to show you how to yeah. put one window. I'm going to show you how to, uh, you know, uh, put one tap somewhere in the kitchen. But you have to go and put the other taps on your own. But I showed you one tap. So. And then that's how you move forward. And just, you know, just realize this is a career. This is a profession. You can always make some money on this. Even if you're studying another thing like social work or geology or um, legal work, you know, you can always learn JavaScript as a side job or even to help in, in promoting your own business. There's so many uses for it. And also, Professor, as I keep reminding everybody, I do have an open forum. So the forum is not time limited. Like you only get one hour with me once in a while, but the forum is open all the time. So the more questions you ask, uh, I know I promise I will reply. And if I get too many questions, you know, I'll hire somebody to help me as well. But the forum is active and open. So just, just, just for the students to know, Professor. Okay, I'm looking for the link to the forum. Uh, professor, the link to the forum is there in the one sheet. The link definitely works, sir. This is the one, sir, here. Uh, oh, front end discussions. In? Let me just put a marker on that. There it is. I see it. It's number four on the important link. Item number four, yes, sir. That link definitely works. Sir. The only link that's not working is the free code camp. That's an error. I'll fix it and I'll send a reverse document in the next session. You know, I'm going to, I don't think this document will be actually uploaded to what you have the final class listed on the AU website and they'll have your presentation because I think you sent in your presentation, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I, I, you probably did not send the document with these links. Uh, no, Professor. There was no option to send the PDF. So that's why I made a point to share it in the class. Okay. Class. So I'm going to send this PDF to the technician who's going to upload the, this document. So yeah. that you, so Professor, I think then you really wait for this. the next version, Professor. Wait for the next version. Like this version, I oh, still okay. have to pick. But you, yeah, otherwise, it'll be double work for you. Yes. Got it. Perfect. Understood. Uh, but more importantly, Professor, uh, even if they don't have the one sheet or something, they just have to make sure to either follow me on GitHub or just Google my name and they'll eventually end up on the discussion forum anyway. So if somebody really wants to ask me a question, it's not that hard to find the forums. All right. I think we've come to the end of our time. Jay is back and uh, going forward with JavaScript and yes, its usefulness. <sighs> And all the things you can do with it and the way you can make money on it and, and build a career and have fun with it and do some interesting creative things. Ugh. Thank you so much, Jay. Yes, sir. Oh, so yes, next sir. time you'll come back and you'll take us into some lessons. Uh, uh, yes, Professor. So today's plan was the tools that I want to show. So this will this is what I will be doing in the next session. So just today Perfect. we had to we discussed the one sheet and other topics. Uh, the next session will be the ones which are already there on the slides. Yes. Right there, those those three basic areas like the lead code, the demo projects, and the GitHub. That one. Yes. Got it. The next session, I'll start with the developer tools, sir. I'll show how the VS Code editor works. I'll show how the Firefox works. I'll show how GitHub works. And I'll also show whatever extra thing. Like, for example, I realized today that maybe the students will benefit if I show them how Free Code Camp works. So I'll add that as well uh, to my pipeline, Professor. Okay, I see a question here. Could you please share the recording? This is being recorded. Within a day or two, you'll see it on your on your student platform. Just go to the live class link, and then you'll be able to see the past class. Click on it, and there'll be a link to look at the recording. All right. Now, Professor, I have time if anyone has any more questions. Uh, because, I, I, because every session of JavaScript, sir, is going to oh. be very dense. Herbert has his hand up. Herbert, can you activate your microphone? I think I have to unpin you so that I can see everybody. There he is. Uh, thank you. Th thank you, Prof. Yes. Thank you, Prof. And thank you, Professor Jeff. But uh, yes, uh, Cece Haber have raised his hand. Maybe he has questions that will help us understand some things. So that, will, that is why I said, let me just uh, raise to make sure that he... They, let him be given opportunity to ask the question. Uh, okay, okay. Hello? Uh, Professor, I, I didn't realize that was a statement Haba. or a question. CC Haba asked a question about Jihaba. Uh, CC raised his hand. 
maybe his question will benefit us. So let him be given opportunity to ask a question. Well, I see a question from CC Java. It's first asking what so that Java was about was. the Java and JavaScript professor. I did answer it, and he even replied he understood. So I okay. believe I already answered it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. No problem. Yeah, as we go through this course, they, come back, everybody, because once you begin to realize what this is all about, the JavaScript, it's going to be like, whoa, this is really interesting and important and powerful. Okay, I don't see any more questions. Jay, Jay is there anything more you would like to say? Uh, no, I'm just, uh, in that case, Professor, like before I go, as always, my main thing is uh, please watch these videos in the recorded order. Rewind, use the rewind thing. You have to rewind, you have to pause. Uh, pen and paper, as I always tell you, practice. You have to budget at least 10 to 15 hours per week. And, and as I said, when you get doubts and you have to have doubts, if you don't get doubts in programming, uh, that means you're not learning anything. So when you get doubts, we have our forum on GitHub. Come and ask questions, and I will reply within 24 to 48 hours. So that's all I wanted to say, Professor. I, I'm done from my end. Yes, sir. Uh, an interesting question would be, if you want to do an essay on a particular course, is there any way to practice your JavaScript to actually do the assignment essay? Can you create a web page? showing your essay how would you do that uh professor you you could uh do that and in fact since you since you're asking professor i'll show something else as well i didn't want to introduce this in the class but since you have brought it up go i'll on. show you something professor it might be exactly what you're looking for now if you go here if you go back to the main free code camp link in the top they actually have another parallel course which is not part of our discussion but it is related they have another certificate for responsive web certification, which goes a little bit more deeper into what you just said. Like you actually write an essay into a website. Now that's not part of our game plan here, Professor. My game plan is JavaScript because that is the more tougher of the things that you can learn. Whereas what you see on the screen is fairly straightforward. But if those of you are curious, I'll put this link in the chat. You know, if you want to do what Professor Lambert just said about, you know, you actually so put an essay on the internet or something, if, this is the way. If you produce your own video documentaries about something that's happening in your community, you can create your own website to put those videos right there. Uh, stuff like that, yes, Professor. That is uh, uh, That happens a lot in this course, responsive web design, which I am not, uh, I, I can only recommend, uh, but it is not something we are tackling right now. Yes, sir. I hear you, but it's it's for those those people who want to be able to promote their work internationally. They can create a, a responsive web design that's gonna help them promote their work more effectively internationally. Uh, like, for example, what you said, Professor, like putting an essay and then putting it on a website and stuff like that. Now, we will be building a website at the very end of the, um, you know, uh, all the series of videos. But if somebody wants to get a head start on it and maybe pursue that in a more, like you said, Professor, what if somebody wants to become a front end developer, then this is the one for right. them. So once you yes, do it for yourself, it's like it's like when you do like international grant. You 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 apply for an international grant money, and then once you're successful in that, all of a sudden you can start selling your services to help other people write their international grants. Something so like, like that, professor. Yes. Sir. So if yes. you can if you can do your own web design, then all of a sudden you can start selling your services to show other people how they can do their own web design. So this this is a job That's opportunity, right, everybody. Yes. You're promoting your own career and you're going to promote your skills to get even more money. Okay, we have another question from Bo Kang. Bo Kang Sinatsi, dressed very casual today. <laughs> Always looking good, though. Can you hear me, bro? Uh, yes. 
Yeah, my question is simple. I just want to ask, can I create a profile for, let's say I'm having a business, maybe I'm tutoring 70 students online. Eh? Can I help the, can I create uh, a profile for each student using JavaScript or GitHub software so that I can monitor all the progress of those students? And even if they are paying me, can I uh, check in monitoring who is paying, who, who is behind in terms of paying, making payments, and also monitor their progress in terms of submitting assignments, their average performance. There you uh, Right, right. So the answer is yes. However, right. it's a very, very long term goal so just to give you an explanation so first step you have to learn javascript second step you have to learn responsive web design third step you have to learn databases fourth step you have to learn authentication and after that you have to learn a framework that can help you do on this so the short answer is yes but the long answer is it will be a while before you can building something so complex and the database okay. could be as simple as an Excel program? Not really, Professor, but for JavaScript and so on, you will have to use a proper database. Uh, for example, the dashboard I showed you, I am using a database called as Postgre. So that's the one I use. That's the brand I am using for the last couple of years. So you might choose to use SQL Server or MySQL or even SQLite, something simple. So if you're working with programming professor, you have to use a, a, a database. I mean, you can connect an Excel sheet if you want, but that kind of defeats the purpose of a website because a website is supposed to run on a browser, on a mobile phone or a computer. So if your Excel sheet usually sits on your computer or in some kind of a file server, which is not always convenient and it's very, very slow and prone to security errors and you know malware infections and macros and whatnot. So when it comes to building applications, Professor, it comes down to JavaScript, front-end development, database design, authentication, hosting, plus a framework that helps you put all this together. So, so, so it is a lengthy process, Professor. Okay. Mm, what do you, what do you think? Okay. Yes, I, I, I understood, Prof. He explained very nicely. And then I think it's a long journey, but it's an achievable goal. The last one is going to you, Dr. Lambert. I'm actually with my brother here. How, uh, how can I explain to him, uh, maybe saying, we disagree that USA is the richest country in the world. Then he's actually, how did we arrive in that? Conclusion, how can I explain to him? Uh, Professor Lambert, I didn't, I didn't get that, sir. I, I didn't understand. Uh, yeah, there was a couple uh, of words the... that cut out from, from the transmission. So I didn't, get, is I didn't it, get the whole question. Is it about inspiring a younger person to take up software development? If, uh, if that is the question, then I, I don't believe that, uh, so Professor, I'm more of a sink or swim kind of guy. So I, I don't believe in cajoling. So if somebody is looking forward to a bright future, then they must internally, you know, self-motivate themselves to take up a skill. So if you if you have a brother, then as a older person, the best thing you can do is tell them like, look, look, look at this video. This is a guy in India who was very poor and is doing okay now because of software development. And then hopefully the younger person can uh, understand that, okay, if he learns coding today when he's young, by the time he is 20, he can be a professional developer. So that's the best way I would go about motivating an younger person, Professor, because I don't believe in pushing people. I like to pull them. So it's better if people you know, come up with their own ideas to decide what they want to do. So I, I, that's the best answer I can think of here, Professor. Like, how would you inspire a younger person? You know, tell them what they can do with a career. It could be money, it could be success, it could be a family, it could be coming out of poverty, it could be prosperity. Uh, we don't know what young people like. So which are, which are one of these things they gotta choose. And one way of achieving that prosperity 
is through coding. It's not the only way. You could do many things in life. But I'm a developer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna you know talk about what I know. So I know about coding. It helped me out of poverty. It might help you too. Uh, I don't know if that's the answer that person was looking. Bukang, is that the answer you were looking for? Uh, he says thank you. Okay. Okay. No yes, no, I think you you answered me, but uh, yeah, I, I I'm traveling, so my network is kicking. Yes. I, I understand. No problem. You can come back and watch the recording to get the answer. Okay. Thank you so much. Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think with that, I don't see any more questions. Yeah. We've come to the end of our time here, but I would suggest everybody just go to like freedcodecamp.org and start go with that link and start going through some of those lessons. Just get a feel for it. See what this is all about and start putting together the language and the concepts. The first step is JavaScript professor. That is why I'm yeah. focusing on that. Like, because it's like, you know, it's like when you're trying to learn a new language, like let's say you want to marry someone in India. The first step is you should learn an Indian language first. How do you say hello? How are you? Exactly. Are you hungry? So, and or you're in a restaurant. What would you like to eat? I would like, you know. That's what I'm trying to do, with a professor. Before you can aspire to build a website or become a developer, do this, do that. First step, you must learn the language. Yeah. So my, my logic behind this workshop is I'm going to teach you the language. You decide what you want to do with it. CC Jules, hand up, ready to go. Okay, so I sent my last questions uh, uh, apart from the first one uh, re uh, replied by Mr. J. Oh, I have two oh, other oh questions sorry. In the chat, in the chat, you have the first question. We have to do the practice for the next uh, every session of uh, of live course regarding the Java, if possible, Mr. J, to make us practicing the coding in Java. Second question. We will need also to know how to host a new write and code website, how to deal with the host servers supplier. And the last question, a lot of issues for web, web, web designer are the preference of the web server, as well as the Laragon, Laravel. Which one is the better path to do deployment? Thank you. So I'll answer them one after another here. Uh, so yes. the, the thing is, for practicing JavaScript, the only thing I can recommend, because we only have one or two sessions, you know, once in a while, is you have to spend all your time on free code camp. And then when you get stuck at a specific chapter, you have like about 200 to 300 chapters. So let's say you get stuck at chapter number five. That is where you take that chapter and go to my discussion forum, open a new thread with the chapter you're stuck in along with the code that you wrote plus the error that you're getting. Now, why do we need all this? Because one, I will only help you if you are helping yourself. So if you're not putting any effort, that means you don't have an error. So I don't have to help you. That's the item number one, very basics in programming. Second question, we talked about frameworks and hosting and stuff like that. Those things are minor issues in the grand scheme of things. So I would request you to first step should be to focus on learning the JavaScript. And as you're learning JavaScript and you spend more time exploring the JavaScript ecosystem, you will find out for yourself, should you choose Laravel? Should you choose Next.js? Should you choose React Yes, Because there are about some 50 frameworks in JavaScript. And I, I'm not the right guy to tell you which is good or bad. That's like me telling you which car you should buy. I don't know because for me, what I like in a car may not be what you like. Or you might be limited with what you have in your country or university. For example, in India, a lot of universities use AngularJS, even though AngularJS is not the most popular framework. So it's a cultural thing, perhaps. Whereas the newer Enger colleges and Enger universities in India, 
they use react js yes. so as an indian person i might say hey you know what you need to focus well, on react yes yeah. at the same time in this workshop at the end of this workshop you know when it ends after a few months we'll be building the demo project in next js so i have my own reasons for choosing next js and how i deployed it again i'm using something called versal but in your country you may not have versal so those things are very minor things guys so my request to you is first and the main purpose of this workshop is to teach you javascript the core javascript and i promise you in a few months of time you yourself will have so much knowledge you will be in a position to take these decisions yourself without any help from me because these decisions are very country specific region specific culture specific university specific and anything i say will become wrong in a few months jay what i'm okay. going to ask you to do is Thank share you. your screen i want you to go to that freecodecamp.org and show how to yes, open, how to get into that first lesson and what it looks like. I'll do that right now, Professor. So first step, guys, please can understand. You make, can you make that? Can you make that a little bit bigger? Oh uh, yes, Professor. There. Oh yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. No. The good. main thing you have to understand, my dear students, is that you have to have a GitHub account. You can't log in to Free Code Camp. You know, if to do any of these things, you need to log in. Now, there are many ways to log in, but I insist you use your GitHub account. So I'm going to assume that you already know how to use github.com because we already discussed it in the first video. And second, as I said, on my YouTube channel, I made 90 minute videos on how to use GitHub. So that is on you to get take care of the GitHub situation. Once you have the GitHub, you come here, you log in, and then you click on whatever course you want. Now, I mentioned responsive web design, not part of our game plan, but if you wanna try, you can try this. But JavaScript, you go here and you'll see like a very long list of, oh, not this one. This is the new JavaScript. I'm not using this one. Uh, please use the JavaScript link I shared with you. So you go here, scroll down, and you start with this one here. Like for example, let me go directly to the second chapter. So this is how it looks. On the left side, they will show you what that chapter is about. You have to sit and read it. That's what I told you. It takes you 200 to 300 hours. They give you a lot of information and you have to make notes. So every chapter might take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hour. I don't know. So go through all the stuff and then they'll tell you what you have to do. So here they are saying, that we have to create something called as a variable. So let me go ahead and do that right now. So I'm gonna say war and I'm gonna do what they're asking. And then once I think it's right, there's a button called run the test. So it is self-graded, it's self-evaluating. So you click on this and it says, you got it. Now for me, it says 100% because I already finished this course many, many years ago, but when you do it, if this is the first quiz you passed, then it'll show you 1% or 2%. So as you do more and more chapters, the percentage will increase. And when you are at 100%, then you come back and you literally scroll down and start with the next chapter. And you go to the next section, next section, next section, next section, next section. And you eventually finish all the individual chapters and at the end, there are five projects, like mini projects. So they'll ask you to build these mini projects. And when you do the mini projects, you can claim the certification. So it's a very, very lengthy journey. And just to give you guys an example, now when I took this course, it took me about five hours to finish the entire course because I'm already a programmer. Uh, and I'm not trying to show off or anything. Just to give you an idea about how it works. So for me, it took about five hours to do the whole thing. I did it in a single day. Done. Easy. But if you're a first timer, I taught first timer students. I know at least one student who took like a year with me teaching him every day to finish this. So, you know, it, it depends on the person. It depends on the person. So, so uh, did, did I answer your question, Professor? Did I show uh, uh, how, how that works? Yes. And so I think that's why you say give yourself six months to learn this, right? 
Yes, that's sir. Kind of, so I'm that's kind of the average, average figure. between going fast or slow. Right, right. Uh, because one professor, like I believe most of the attendees of the workshop are first time programmers and they may have additional challenges, like they may not have exposure to computers, they may have be on a slower internet, or they may not have the time to spend 10, 20 hours every week to do it. Some of them may be able to spend five hours this week and then they have to take care of some practical matters of life and then they come back. So there's going to be delays, festivals, family situations and whatnot, life commitments. So I would say six months is an average but if you're lucky enough, or if you're naturally talented, if you're naturally smart, then you may be able to do it in a month or so. But if you're slow or you're held back by life responsibilities, it may take a year or something. But, you know, drop, drop, drop becomes an ocean. That's right. Every flood just comes down to little drops of rain. And all of a sudden yes, you have sir. a flood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.